Over the last 10 years, total production has closely followed the progress of the regeneration of the hurricane and volcano-torn Caribbean island of Montserrat. A major part of that process has finally reached a joyful conclusion with the opening of the new multi-purpose Montserrat Cultural Centre, which features state-of-the-art technologies provided by a number of leading companies, including Yamaha Commercial Audio, which designed and supplied the complete sound infrastructure. Throughout the long but ultimately triumphant story behind the venture lies a man who needs no introduction to the vast majority of adult music lovers across the universe. But for the other three of you, Sir George Martin, CBE, was the man best known for signing the Beatles to EMI and helping to inspire generations of musicians by producing some of the greatest recorded work of the 20th century. In 1977, Sir George fell in love with Montserrat and decided to build the ultimate get away from it all recording studio there. Open two years later, Air Studios Montserrat offered all of the technical facilities of its London predecessor, but with the advantages of an exotic location. For more than a decade, Air Montserrat played host to classic recording sessions by a who's who of rock, but then, in 1989, disaster struck when Montserrat was dealt a devastating blow by Hurricane Hugo, which destroyed 90% of the island's structures and brought the studio's glittering story to an abrupt end. Six years later, a volcano eruption took out the island's only town and seaport, and thousands of islanders lost their homes and livelihoods. Others lost their lives. Sir George initially helped the refugees by raising $1.5 million through the Music for Montserrat concert at the Royal Albert Hall, which gathered together many of the Air Studios greats. But what the islanders desperately needed was a local meeting place. With this in mind, Sir George responded with a number of fundraising initiatives, such as selling a limited edition of 500 framed lithographs of his orchestral score for The Beatles Yesterday, signed by him and Sir Paul McCartney, which so far have fetched $2 million. In February, Total Production discussed the project with Sir George at his London apartment. The total we had to raise was about $3.25 million US. Our efforts of fundraising were the main part of the money required. The lithographs raised $2 million. But there were other, many other people contributed. Um, there was a very good lady, an American lady, called Marsha Mitchell, who was a friend of Fred Astaire's daughter. And they decided to put on a show in memory of Fred Astaire at the London Palladium and, and lean on all their rich friends to come to it. And this show generated about $145,000. When I was doing this love show in Las Vegas, I had to write a special score for one of George's songs, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. It was pretty tough for me writing a score from a dead friend with his widow looking on, you know. But fortunately, they like what we did, and it's part of the show. And that score is obviously the last score that I'll ever write of the Beatles. Olivia said, why don't you auction it to raise money for your Montreux band? I thought, great idea. So I got her to sign it, and Kyoko, and Ringo, and Paul. And uh, we auctioned it in Arizona, and it raised 60,000 US dollars. How have the locals responded to this whole project since it started? They're funny people in a way, they're very nice people, but uh, they, they're, they're, they never really believe what you say. So, that, I mean, when I first went to the island in, in the 70s and I said, I'm going to build a recording studio in this place, they looked at me as I was mad and said, oh yeah, that's good. Knowing in their heart of hearts it would never happen. But of course it did happen, and similarly, when I, after that concert, which raised about a million and a half dollars for the refugees, and I said, well, tell me what you want now, and I'll try and do it for you. And that was what they wanted most of all then, because the island was so desperately needing housing and roads and everything else after the volcano. They said what they wanted most of all was a community hall where they could get together. They had nowhere. They couldn't meet for anything, mother's meetings or whatever. They just had nowhere to meet. Mm. So I promised them I'd do this community centre. Of course, it went on for eight, eight years, and they're using it a lot. I mean, it's used mm. almost every night of the week now. Mm.